What's the difference between an ordinary computer program and AI? That's one of the questions I'm getting asked most often and today I will outline how we will get to an answer. Now that we know what an algorithm is, how do we get from here to AI? Everything that runs on a computer has to be an algorithm, so evidently AI has to be an algorithm as well. On the other hand, we have the human mind or human intelligence as a kind of fixed point, because this is what AI researchers are aiming for. So somewhere between these two poles or fixed points, we have to find artificial intelligence. So let's check out whether we find it on Upper Gayo Island. But before I'm off to Abagayo Island, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting this little bell, then you will not miss out on my next adventure. So anything that runs on a computer has to be an algorithm. But not every algorithm exposes a quality that we would consider intelligence. Even before the first computers were built, the early pioneers of AI raised the question how to build machines that resemble human intelligence. At that time, humanity already mastered the physical world. Engineering had led to cars and ships and submarines and even planes. We could build skyscrapers and subways and machines that helped producing tons of products. So humanity had managed to solve tons of physical problems, but none that required the human mind. The human mind exposed a lot of interesting qualities that would surely be beneficial to have in machines. We are very flexible in adapting to new situations and solving problems. What we are capable of doing is partly inherited and partly learned but at the center is the ability to understand. The moment when we realized that we acquired a new skill, that we managed to get our head around something, the moment it clicks and we are able to explain a complex matter to others, the ability to understand is absolutely essential to the human intelligence and we will look into this in more detail to understand the limits of current AI systems. Honestly, what still puzzles me the most is that the AI community has set out to rebuild human intelligence without understanding it. I cannot think of a single engineering task that has been completed successfully without understanding the basic principles and physical laws involved. Airplanes, power plants, radio, even computers or progress in medicine was only possible after understanding the physical process involved. Although we have learned a lot about the human brain in recent years, it's still mostly uncharted territory. For sure, human intelligence resides inside our brain. But in the meantime, we learned that the development of our brains and intelligent behavior cannot be understood without understanding the interplay with our bodies and senses. Equally important, human intelligence cannot be separate from consciousness. And yet, nobody has figured out what consciousness is and what intelligence without consciousness would look like. It even raises interesting philosophical questions whether you can or should assign consciousness to machines. So the natural approach would be to first set out to fully understand the human brain and human intelligence before trying to rebuild it. But there are clear limits to this approach. In physics, we learned a lot by simply destroying things. What happens if we shoot subatomic particles at each other? Or why does a glass break if it falls down? So a lot of physical laws have been discovered by that kind of crude approach. But we can't do this with brains, simply because such an approach would kill the owner of the brain. So the route to understanding the brain and how it's functioning is much longer than understanding the physical world. So the top-down approach of working backwards from the brain to build intelligent machines will have its limits for a long time. The other approach is bottom-up, building systems from the basic concepts of algorithms. And this is the route AI has gone in the past with only some inspiration taken from cognitive science and a rudimentary model of brain cells, the neurons. We will start off by looking at tasks that require the human brain to see how they can be automated using machines or more specific computers. That does not necessarily lead to intelligent machines, but gives a good impression of what kind of task we are currently talking about when we speak about AI. After that, we will have a look into the two main approaches of AI. The first approach is the one of expert systems, where one tries to encode human knowledge into computer-readable form. The hope is that the computer then is able of making intelligent decisions and logical conclusions based on huge databases of human knowledge. This approach was very popular in the 1980s. 
but the system have failed to deliver practical value because they required extensive maintenance. The other approach is called machine learning. The idea is not to feed knowledge, but raw data into the computers. Then, by means of some learning algorithms, the computers have to make sense of the data on their own. This is currently the most popular approach because you can use it to solve practical problems. Think about recommender systems in online shops or voice recognition on smartphones. But also these systems have clear limits when it comes to intelligence. In recent years, the AI community had to admit that none of the current mainstream approaches will lead to anything that's close to human intelligence. Unfortunately, the term artificial intelligence is kind of married to the approach of expert system in machine learning, so the community invented a new term called artificial general intelligence or AGI. At the moment, AGI is just an empty shell for anything that will resemble human-like intelligence. There are ideas what kind of qualities such a system must or should have, but so far there are no new technical concepts or algorithms other than the ones available in AI. So in this way, AGI is more or less completely uncharted territory, and nobody knows when there will be anything meaningful available on this island. So for the time being, it's sufficient to concentrate on the two main approaches of AI to understand what's possible today. For completeness, the community not only talks about AI and AGI, but also about narrow and strong AI, which is basically the same distinction. And this was just a rough roadmap to the upcoming videos, where we will go into more detail of all the mentioned topics.